Warm welcome for those of you that are joining us at this point in the service online. You are very, very welcome. Well, we just sung about those everlasting arms, and uh, in often in life, those things that we trust. And when you get to the point of trusting those everlasting arms, that they'll always be there, that you can never fall, always secure, always present. It's a lovely place to be, isn't it? In his everlasting, all-powerful arms. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So today, I'm continuing the, uh, the series I started a couple of weeks ago. We did the first one on the reluctant prophet whose name is Jonah. The reluctant prophet Jonah. And the last time we joined him, he had a call from God. And uh, instead of responding to the call of God, the well-known story is he ran about as far away as he could. And we were reminded of that, that the word of the Lord comes to us, but we do have a choice how we respond. And there is always a ship sailing in the wrong direction. Always something that can help you move away from God's will. There's always something, a temptation or a distraction. But uh, we know that God never gives up on us. So well, we joined him in a Jonah 1. And we're going to pick him up in a little while, just in a moment now, in Jonah 2. When he's actually, where we left him last time, in the belly of a big fish. And we're going to join him this time, and he's in the belly of that big fish, and we're going to see how he reaches out to God in prayer. Prayer. Now, I know many of you here, you won't admit it probably in church, but you can struggle with praying. Praying the same old things in the same way. And the problem isn't that we actually pray the same things, because often it's the same things that consume our thoughts and our minds, doesn't it? Family, church, job, health finance, whatever it is, often the same things are on our mind. They just take different priority at different stages. But the problem we often challenge us is, is when we lose our inspiration to actually pray, where we can feel like we're failures in prayer. We can feel guilty that we start to pray and our mind wanders to what we're going to do later that day or what shopping we're going to buy or what's on TV or what we're going to eat. Or then we fall asleep and we think, oh my goodness, if I'm bored enough to fall asleep when I'm praying, how boring is this for God? You know, and so we can really beat ourselves up. If it's boring us, gosh, it must be boring him as well. Now, don't get me wrong. There are ways that we can be helped in prayer. There are various acronyms and various approaches which can be useful. Things like ACTS. You know, there are certain things we say about adoration, don't we? Acts, adoration, we adore the Lord, we focus our adoration on Him. Then C, the confess, we confess the wrong in our lives. T, we thank the Lord for what we're grateful for and S, supplication, the things we want to ask for. So there's lots of things like that that can help and shape our prayers. But I'm always reluctant with formulas. Because otherwise people think if you pray the right way, then God has to respond in the right way. And actually, really, prayer is a conversation. The way you'll speak to anyone else, it's how we speak freely and honestly with those we're most intimate with. We listen and we speak, and it's a very natural thing. And that really is what we want with prayer, for it to be a natural thing. So I'm not about formulas, but there is a prayer today, and there's just four things I'm going to bring out of the text today, which I think are useful for us in our prayers with the Lord. So as I said, last time Jonah was running away from the Lord, he got himself in a lot of trouble. He ends up having to be thrown overboard, otherwise the whole ship's going to go down with all the sailors as well. And he thinks his situation's pretty bad until it gets even worse when he's swallowed by an enormous fish. So that's the point we're going to join him today in Jonah chapter 2. And I'm going to invite David up here, who's going to read that passage of scripture. Over to you, buddy. Right, Jonah 2, verse 1. From inside the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord, his God. He said, In my distress, I called to you, Lord, and he answered me. From deep in the realm of the dead, I called for help, and you listened to my cry. You hurled me into the depths, into the very heart of the seas, and the currents swirled about me. All your waves and breakers swept over me. I said, I have been banished from your sight, yet I will look again towards your holy temple. The engulfing waters threatened me, the deep surrounded me. Seaweed was wrapped around my head. To the roots of the mountains I sank down, the earth beneath 
barred me in forever. But you, Lord my God, brought my life up from the pit. When my life was ebbing away, I remembered you, Lord, and my prayer rose to you, to your holy temple. Those who cling to worthless idols turn away from God's love for them. But I, with shouts of grateful praise, will sacrifice to you. What I have vowed, I will make good. I will say, salvation comes from the Lord. And the Lord commanded a fish, and it vomited Jonah into dry land. Cheers, Father. It's a prayer and a half, isn't it, eh? A powerful passage of scripture. One we know well, but it's very powerful. Whenever we reread it, it's a very powerful scripture. And there's four things I'm, I'm just going to bring out of this particular passage today. Firstly, Jonah was praying because he was in deep trouble. You can't get any deeper trouble than being in the floor of the ocean in the belly of a fish. That's pretty rock bottom, pretty deep. Would you agree? And the first key thing I want to say today is the value of those deep water prayers, those rock bottom prayers, those help me prayers, when literally you're in so deep you don't know which way to turn. Now, often people beat themselves up. We beat ourselves up. Why do we pray more fervently when all the wheels come off? Why can't we pray with God in the good times as well as the bad times? But I think we need to be honest and real with one another. We're often far more motivated when things go wrong or by the negative in life than we are the positive. It's just the way we are. Is that true? Now, any parents in the house? There's some parents. Naughty child... A good child. Which one is likely to absorb most of your attention and focus? We know the answer. The one that's exhibiting negative behavior, it tends to focus us far more than actually the child that is behaving well. Same with survival instincts. However hard you try, I'm pretty sure that you will run far faster if there's a lion chasing you rather than a rabbit. Yeah? The negative or the danger often focuses us far more. And it's the same with prayer. You will probably pray far more fervently when you're in the belly of a fish than you are lazing on a beach eating fresh fish. True? So we need to be honest and real with ourselves that the chances are, if we're human, our prayer life will be far more motivated when the wheels come off of our life. And we see this in chapter 1 when we go back in verse 5. When the storm is raging, the other sailors who don't follow the Lord start calling out to God. Jonah goes below deck and goes to sleep. So he's not in a place where he's particularly moved to pray. He only starts to pray when actually he's in the water and then he's consumed by a great big fish in complete darkness, struggling to survive. But that is exactly the type of situations when we need God. Those times when nobody else can reach us, when all the things or people we rely on aren't cutting it, the doctors, the counsellors, our finances, our friends, our family, our government, government, even ourselves, are not enough to get us out. It's often those times when it's rock bottom and we realise that only the unmovable and the unshakable God can reach us because nobody else can get us through. Effectively, those times when it's like being in the belly of a great big fish beneath the waves in the darkest place imaginable. For any youth watching, even your mobile phones, even the mobile phone cannot help you when you're deep down in the belly of a fish because there's no signal. There's no Instagram, there's no TikTok, there's no Facebook, there's no anything else you can connect with. It's not there. There is no signal. And that is an example of what it's like in the most difficult times of life. It seems that nothing else can reach you and there's no signal going in or out. Except for prayer. Prayer is the one thing we always have access Have we remembered from the morning in this service that God is fully present in every situation, and every circumstance? God is there. And it's only God that can help and only God that can deliver. And that's the first thing about the importance when we are struggling to keep 
praying and keep connecting and keep focusing on God. When things don't seem to be changing, you keep praying. When things get steadily worse, get deeper and darker, you keep praying. In the lowest and darkest moments, keep praying. You can be in a crowd of people, yet you can be completely alone and isolated. Surrounded with people, yet feel a loneliness. Those are the times when you need to keep praying. When only God can reach you, when only God can deliver you. The one who is always present, always available. We spoke about it a couple of weeks ago, but last time, Psalm 139. Those words that ring out, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I run and hide from your face? If I go up to the heaven, you're there. If I go down to the realm of the dead, you're there too. If I fly with wings into the shining dawn, you're there. If I fly into the radiant sunset, you're there waiting. Wherever I go, your hand will guide me. Your strength will empower me. It's impossible to disappear from you or to ask the darkness to hide me. For your presence is everywhere, bringing light into my night. Those times when the night is so dark, you know only his light can shine the way. God is there when it seems there is no way. Keep praying, keep connecting, because he is with you. As it says in Psalm 46 verse 1, God is our refuge and our strength, ever-present help in times of trouble. In fact, sometimes the very thing you think will sink you can end up defining you or saving you, or somehow as you move through it, spur you on to learn something in the deep, dark place that causes you to better go on and help others that are struggling with what you've gone through. One of the most painful things I've ever faced as a pastor, and there's been many, was when I actually uh, did a funeral service for a three-year-old boy, Kai, who died of leukemia. The church was absolutely full. There was so much grief and so much pain, yet there was somehow this joy of the light of this little boy a light in that family, in the midst of that grief. The parents went through a journey that was just unimaginable. But they started to recognize that the place they went to, unless you've been there, you cannot comprehend it, but it gave them something to better come alongside other parents. And they suddenly realized that something deposited in them meant they could go and comfort others. They then started a charity. They're now overseas. And they are blessing, raising funds for other children in the same situation, saving other children's lives where theirs couldn't be, and coming alongside other parents. What was their darkest and most difficult time? Somehow they came through. Somehow God got them through. And the life of Jonah, Jonah thought what would sink him actually didn't. It ended up saving him. Jonah 1.17, God provided for Jonah by sending this great fish. In the midst of the darkness, God was and is making a way. And the very thing sometimes you think will completely overwhelm you or swallow you or sink you is what somehow God can get through. We can read scriptures like Romans 8 to 8 and say, in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. It sounds great, doesn't it? But when you're in the midst of it and it's bad and it's difficult and it's dark, you just can fail to really grasp that. But that is the truth. Somehow in the midst of darkness, God can make a way. The very thing that swallow you doesn't necessarily need to sink you. So keep praying, keep believing, don't give up. Keep praying those deep water prayers because God is with you. Amen? Amen? I know it's tough when you cannot see the light, when the darkness doesn't seem to recede. Those times when you don't even know what to pray. Get those times when you don't even know what to pray. You just don't know what to pray. You just sit there not knowing what to pray. Well, that brings me on to my next point. One great way to pray is Bible-based prayers. Bible-based prayers, prayers inspired by the Word of God. When Jonah was in the belly of that whale, he is praying the Psalms. If you go through, you see those things, you'll start referencing the Psalms. He was praying the very Word of God in the midst of his darkest time. To pray the Psalms, he must have had a knowledge of God's Word. 
to pray Bible-based prayers, he must have had a knowledge of God's word. And some seasons are so dark, we just don't know what to pray. Those are times when God's word can shape our prayers. God's word can help us, guide us, bring transform- transformation, bring healing, be a fresh perspective, and bring deliverance. Bible-based prayers. Bible-based prayers means talking to God with what comes to mind as you read his word. In a practical way, you read a passage of scripture and then you revisit it and you say, Lord, what are you saying to me? How can I use this to shape my prayers? You know, at the beginning of this service, I prayed for Ukraine. In that prayer were Bible-based prayers. I was lifting the word of God back to God and saying, Lord, this is what you say in your word. Bible-based prayers. And the Psalms work incredibly well. If you haven't read them or not for a while, read through the Psalms. Because anything you're likely to face, you will find in one of the Psalms. You will find something that connects with your situation, either the pain you're in or the victory that you seek. The Psalms put it into expression. They often express what's in your heart. You know, I wonder if those in Ukraine are praying Psalm 91 at this point. I had friends in Kosovo, you know the Kosovan War, and they said Psalm 91. If you haven't read it, read that and do it from a a perspective if you were in Ukraine now. But they were in Kosovo and they prayed that psalm. And she said, the the couple I know said that they prayed it and they believed it. Just some of the things they prayed, and this is some of the word of God in that psalm. Help us to know, Lord, that we are sheltered by you. Help us to find rest under the shadow, under your shadow, Father God. May we know deep within us that you are our refuge, that you are our fortress. We thank you, Lord, that you tell us that you will cover us with your feathers and under your wings we will find refuge. Lord, you say you will rescue those who love you. Lord, protect us. Be with us. Be with us in trouble and deliver us. They prayed that psalm again and again. The word of God, just reaching out to God, the word that he says. You can pray any part of the Bible. Any part of the Bible. I would say that certain parts are easier than others. So start with the Psalms. You know, other bits you may find a bit more challenging. But any part, God can speak to you through any part of the Bible. But the book of Psalms, I believe, is an amazing place to help you shape your prayers. Because the Psalms are shaped and written by God, reflected back to God. They're inspired to write songs for the use of worshipping God. So they're meant to be declared back to God. They're amazingly powerful. And when you have scriptures that mean something, highlight it in your Bible. God doesn't mind you writing over your Bible. He doesn't mind you putting graffiti. Is that all right? You can underline it, highlight it, write it on your fridge. Write down those words because when you get a word from God, it's because he wants you to know that's for you. It's not by accident if you hear a sermon and you go, oh, how amazing. That seems like God was speaking to me. It's because he is. The word of God will speak to you. When you haven't got the words to say, pray the word of God. Pray the word of God. To have prayed the Psalms, Jonah must have known the Psalms. He must have meditated on them. He must have remembered them. I've said this before, but, uh, you know, when I went to China, and the same is true in North Korea, when there were Bible shortages, one of the things they did in North Korea and in China as well, I met Christians that had to recite all 176 verses of Psalm 119 to show they were serious enough about the Word of God, that they treasured it enough, that in a moment of Bible shortage, they recognized the Word of God was needed. Imagine that. Do we treasure God's Word? Do we realize this power? in the Word of God, to meditate on the Word of God. We need to soak ourselves in Bible Scripture, bathe in the Word of God, let it flow over us, let it throw through us, allow it to be absorbed like a sponge. You know when you buy a new sponge, you put it in the water, you do this, don't you? It doesn't absorb, does it? If you keep going, what happens? There's a moment when it gives in, and suddenly you pull it up and it's dripping with water. And it's like that with the Word of God. Sometimes we think, well, I'm reading and I'm reading. But the more you read like that sponge, it then starts to soak in. The power of God's Word, the presence of the Holy Spirit. You start to breathe in, soak in the blessings. When you breathe out words to others, they're words of blessing. You start to absorb the nourishment, that spiritual oxygen. 2 Timothy 3.16, all of Scripture is God 
breathed. You are breathing in the essence and the word and the power of God. That's what the Bible does. And you know what I love about reading the Bible? When you think your life is in a mess, you realize you're not alone. Sometimes you read it and go, well, my goodness, at least I'm not in the belly of a fish. But actually what encourages you, you realize there's others that are going through dark times just like you. And then you start to believe, and even if it's a glimmer of hope, if God did it for them, if he did it for them, then maybe just. If he really knows my name, he can do it for me. You start to believe that it's possible. So you pray those Bible-based prayers. Open the word of God and let him speak to you through those Bible-based prayers. Amen? Amen. I love this next one. Hands up if you're perfect. <laughs> For those watching online, I'm not going to respond to how many put their hands up here. We are through Christ, of course. But actually, I love this next point. Point three, even when it's your fault that you are in the complete and utter mess you are in, God still helps us. He still answers our prayers. Hands up if you think that's awesome. I love that. Jonah was categorically the architect of his own downfall. Remember he said before, the word of the Lord came to him. He knew exactly, he was, he was a prophet of God, but he decided to ignore it. So he was the architect of his own downfall. He was running from God. Rather than tell a whole nation to repent, to save a whole nation, he'd rather run the other way and let them all die, wanting God to judge them. His decisions affect a whole ship. All the sailors nearly end up losing their lives because of Jonah. Even the poor fish had to put up with his bony frame for three days in its gut before God spoke to him and he managed to vomit it out again. He was the architect of his own downfall. He had failed. And maybe you failed. But failing does not make you a failure. And you know what? God specializes in dealing with failure. Can I have a show of hands if you know that God specializes in dealing with failures? Amen. He abs- it's his bag, baby. That's why Jesus came. That's not scriptural, but if it could be, couldn't it? That's my bag, baby, says God. God hears, God answers, God delivers, even when we don't deserve it. Over the funeral services this week, there's one word that has consistently appeared, and that's the word grace. You don't earn grace. It's unmerited and unearned. It's not based on your performance and your goodness, but on somebody else's goodness and their kindness, on their gracious act. God is a gracious God. Others may distance themselves from you, like the sailors had to with Jonah we looked at last time. Others may give up on you, but he will not. He always sees you, always hears, always acts, so you can keep praying. And know even when you fail, he will never, ever fail you. Whenever I read scriptures, it amazes me at his grace. Would you heal ten lepers? Would you heal ten lepers knowing if only one would come back and say thank you? Would you have done that? He did it knowing only one would say thank you. He went around healing every disease and every sickness, not just for the holy, good, decent people. He healed people that would go on and still not follow him. That is a gracious God. He is a gracious and loving God. So keep praying. Keep believing, even if you're in the mess you're in because of you, he will never give up on you. And that brings me to my final point this morning. We always have hope. Always have hope. Romans 15, 13, I love this. One of my favorite passages of scripture. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. You know what trust does? When you trust something, you lean against it like the everlasting arms, don't you? When you trust God, you pray. Trust is connection. It brings connection with God. And as you connect, that thought of all joy and all peace and an overflowing hope as that trust brings you into his presence. We need to pray hope-filled prayers, prophetic prayers, knowing there is a time coming when we'll be through what we're through. Prayers of hope. Jonah prays a prophetic prayer. He's praying this from inside the belly of a fish. Verse 4, I will look again towards your holy temple. There is a bold prophetic statement. I will look again. When you're in the belly of a fish, that takes some faith, doesn't it? Fathoms deep. I will look again on your holy temple. In other words, as dark as it is, I'm coming through this. I'm coming through. He was speaking of a future time that hadn't yet happened. 
Romans 4.17, God can raise the dead and call into being things that don't even exist yet. Like Jonah, we can pray hope-filled prayers for things that as of yet do not yet exist. Believing in a time ahead when however dark it is, this season will pass and we will still be standing. You know what? The fact you're here today or listening online means whatever you've gone through, you are still standing. Do you know that? However tough, the pain, the grief, the hurt, the loss, the abuse, you are still standing. And maybe you're just doing this one day at a time, one breath at a time, one decision at a time, but you are still standing. It hasn't broken you. You are still here. And somehow, even in the darkness, it will not consume us. God can bring a light. The fact you're here today proves that. Don't get me wrong. It's so important that we admit when we're struggling because the wheels come off sunners and we need to be honest with each other. That's why God places us in church. There are times to weep and to grieve and to hurt, but at the same time to be moved to pray like Jonah, a prayer of hope. The Sunday my dad died, I heard an hour before the service. Do you know what I was doing at that time? I was upstairs crying my eyes out. Every bone in my body wanted to leave this church and run. I said, Lord, how can I go and do child dedications? How can I preach your word? I didn't even have to look at somebody. I want to run. And I was sitting there and I was weeping. And then I said, Lord. And I started to pray in hope. I said, Lord, thank you that I'm going to leave this service. And as I walk out, I'm going to be blessed. Because I'm going to see the faces of children and their parents and those children that are being dedicated in your sight. I'm going to be blessed by being in your presence, my brothers and sisters. The word you're delivering, I'm believing, is a word that people need to hear this day. And I knew this day would, you knew this day would happen before it did. So if you knew I would be here an hour before the service, wanting to run out, then you also knew that you had enough for me to get through the service. So I said, Lord, thank you. Thank you for the time at the end when I know that your plans will be accomplished. Effectively, I was saying, I will look on your temple again. I will come through. Those prayers of hope declare that it's not over. It's not finished. That God has a plan. Hope-filled prayers remind you it's not over. There is a road ahead that you will pass through the dark valleys. It's not denying where you are now. It's not denial. It's just getting a sense of coming through. And God wants you to know today, whether you're listening online or here, you will come through. You can pray those hope-filled prayers. Say to the Lord, give me that picture. Give me the hope of what tomorrow will look like, that there'll be a time when I'll be standing there. Now I'm in a dark place, but I'll be there. And you pray that in. You pray for that time when you'll be coming through and start holding on to it and believing it. That is what prayers of hope do. They bring us your trust in the Lord. They bring a peace and they bring a joy and they bring an overflowing hope that is impossible to us, but possible with God. I know that some of you right now are in a belly of a fish. You are in a dark and difficult place. But God is there. Seek him, listen to him, cry out to him. Seek those prayers of hope because he will bring you through. Jonah prayed from a dark place and made a declaration. And after 72 hours in the belly of a fish, he vowed he would make good whatever God had called him to do. And that verse says that David read verse 10, the Lord spoke to the fish and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. Jonah came through the darkest time and you can too. Whether it is deep grief or hurt or pain or abuse, whatever it is, God can bring you through. Others in the Bible experience exactly the same. Mighty, mighty people of God experience deep darkness. Job Job lost everything. He even cursed the day he was born. Listen to this for a rock bottom position to be in. Praying to the Lord, why did I not perish at birth and die as I came from the womb? I have no peace, no quietness. I have no rest but only turmoil. What place was Job in when he prayed that prayer? Yet what does the Bible go on and say? The Bible says, The Lord blessed the latter part of Job's life more than the first. God blessed Job with prosperity and gave him twice as much as he had earlier in life. The mightiest king Israel ever had. 
Not the king of kings is the mightiest, but King David. David was depressed. Listen to this. My soul is in anguish. How long, O Lord, how long? I am worn out from groaning all night long. I flood my bed with weeping and drench my couch with tears. Some of you know what that's like. Psalm 6, there's a prayer for you. But Psalm 40, David says this, I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit and out of the mud and out of the mire. God did it for them. He can do it for you. You keep praying. Keep praying those faith-filled prayers filled with hope. Remind you of those things, of those victories in the Bible and say, that's what I'm praying into. I'm believing for that time ahead. God will lead you. Amen. So as I just bring this into land, don't give up praying. Give, don't give up praying in those dark and difficult times. Don't beat yourself up that you don't pray as much in the good times. Keep praying. Keep connecting. God is always present and you need him. Others will not reach you or be able to solve your problems the way he can. Stay connected. When you don't know how to pray, open your Bible. Open your Bible. You know, when you open the word of God, it's like eating healthy food. When you first eat healthy food, there'll be no difference. Your waste will be exactly the same. Your energy levels will be the same. But when you keep eating healthily, there is a point when suddenly you get slimmer. There's a point when your energy levels rise. The nourishment begins to work and the word of God is like that. You start to be nourished and you start to feel stronger. Keep praying those Bible-based prayers. And remember, whatever mess you're in, God's grace is always active. He will always be moved to bless you and give you things that you don't deserve because he loves you that much. He's a God filled with grace. But ask him for those pictures of the future, a prayer of hope that you will be in that future place, however dark it is now. Pray those prayers of hope. Declare that you're coming through. Amen. So you pause now. His presence is here. You pause and just let him just minister to you just for a time now. You and him. I sense the Lord saying at this moment that, uh, you know, he knows. He knows the darkness that you're in. It's surrounding you and you cannot see any glimmer of light. But he wants you to know that he's prepared a future place, that he will guide you through and light your path, that he won't be leaving you even for a moment. Whether you are waking or sleeping, he is ever present. And even when you don't understand, he is with you and he knows. He has a place that he's leading you through and leading you to. And he won't leave you for a moment. Thank you, Lord. If you really need a touch from the Lord right now, just, just lift your hands. Whether you're listening online or you're here, just lift your hand now. Just lift him and just, just say, Lord, I need it so much. I just need your presence. Just lift your hand to him and just let his healing wash over you. His peace, his presence, his reassurance. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Bring your healing touch, Lord. May those everlasting arms surround all those that need your arms at this point. May they press into you and feel your embrace, feel your presence. Lord, may they know every tear they shed is captured by you, every tear. And Lord, I pray that to your presence will just bring a deep peace. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
I've tried so hard to see it. Took me so long to believe it. That you choose someone like me to carry your victory. Perfection could never earn it. You give what we don't deserve. And you take the broken things and raise them to glory. You are my Lord, you are our champion. 
we are seated in heavenly places. We are seated in heavenly places. That is our position before you this morning. Hallelujah. We praise you. Let's just lift our voice again, um, my friends. Oh, when I lift my voice and shout, every wall comes crashing down. I have the authority. Jesus has
have your way, Jesus. I just had two pictures while we were worshipping. And one just saw the Lord so clearly and he was holding uh, this sort of baby, this child in his arms. And he was just reaching out his arms. And uh, I sent somebody here who's reaching out for the child that you've lost. And uh, he's reaching out his hands because one day you'll hold that child again. And although you've missed years here of getting to know them, there'll be an eternity to know them, to meet them, and to glorify in, in their presence with the Lord. So uh, if that's you, just the Lord's reaching out to say that time will come. That time will come. And the other picture I had was there was this pot that was broken. And because uh, it was broken, the light was shining through. And I could see the inside of the pot. And there's this amazing sort of pattern of blues and greens, just a beautiful pattern inside. On the outside, it was quite plain, but inside it was beautiful. So the light shone into this pot, illuminating the inside. But because there were cracks, the light also shone out the other side. And as I was just listening and praying, and I sensed that the Lord saying that to somebody here, and maybe online as well, that the very fact that you're cracked and you're broken means his light has reached in and will illuminate an inner beauty in you that you don't know is there. And that inner beauty will become alive through his light shining in through the brokenness. And because you are broken and cracked, those will remind you of what you've gone through, but the light will shine from you. That inner beauty you have will shine into the life of others and bring light to them. Because nothing we go through is wasted with the Lord, whatever pain, whatever brokenness. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, that you are with us. Thank you, Lord, that this is not the end. Thank you, Lord, that you always have a way through. Even death, Lord, even death is not the end. It is only the beginning of the greatest adventure and the greatest story that's ever been written. And Lord, I just pray that each one of us will know that those valleys come to pass, that there is always a way through. May we stand together side by side and Lord, lead each one of us forward. We thank you. We praise you. We believe in you, Jesus. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. Our well, church, have a great week in the presence of the Lord. And see you soon. Amen. And if you do want prayer, there is a prayer team at the front. You can share if there's something you want prayed over. But you can just come up. You don't have to say a word. And someone can just pray quietly over you. So if you need prayer, when the team come up, just come up. Whether you want to speak or not, just let them at least lay a hand on you or just rest on your shoulder and let them just, just pray into you, even quietly. The Lord wants to minister. He knows what you're going through. You no need to articulate it. So if you need that, the prayer team will be up here at the end. Otherwise, stay for a tea or coffee. See you all next week. Bless you all.